Okay, so we're recording now. Let me hide the controls here. There we go. Okay, um, and so we're running the whole course through D2L, um, and it's all already built. Uh, I'm not anticipating having to build much more. Um, when I record these lectures, you can see there's a placeholder now, there right now. Uh, with the Zoom login information, we're going to be using the same Zoom meeting for the whole week. Um, and so my intent is to post these recordings in those placeholders and get rid of the Zoom meeting information after the fact. So a few extra pages may pop up. Uh, for example, there's one page there for this morning, but I'm going to split this into three recordings this morning and post it as three pages. Um, and so I'll set it up so that updates to you when those are posted. So that should show up as an update in D2L. Um, with that being said, I'm sure Zoom's going to do some messed up stuff. D2L's going to do some messed up stuff. So uh, we're going to play it by ear. Um, Zoom processes the recordings after I record them. Sometimes it does that immediately. I had one where I was worried we lost a whole lecture with a guest speaker, uh, the Jeff Lamb mining presentation that you all will see later this week because uh, it took like 24 hours to process that one. So uh, we'll see uh, as it goes. But So I've already sent you all a few emails. And so here's kind of the structure for the week. And the way we've set this up, our plan is that, is, is that this will just be a normal week of field station. Uh, when I say a normal week of field station, I mean a, a lot of long days and a lot of work and a lot of group work. Um, and that's what we always do in field station. So we've tried to mimic that as best we can with this online format. So we're gonna start here, all these times are gonna be central time if anyone's anywhere else. And so we're gonna start here every morning at 8 a.m. Um, we've got lectures on a couple of these first days and we'll just use these as check-ins on some of the other days. Um, the Zoom meeting on Friday at 8 a.m. Once we're done reviewing Dendro, answering any questions you all have related to Dendro, um, Dr. Oswald and I are gonna turn it over uh, to Dr. McBroom and Dr. Culhavey um, and they'll give you an intro to the mill tour uh, portion of Field Station. Um, then we have a check-in every day at 4 p.m. and that's just to answer your questions, fix stuff that's broken with Zoom or D2L, um, address any issues we've got, what's working, what's not. And then right after that check-in, we'll flip you to the quiz for that day's module. Um, so there's gonna be six graded quizzes all week. Five of them are module quizzes. We have our five main modules I'll get to in just a moment, one a day. All the quizzes and all the self-assessments in the course are short answer and format, because that's kind of how civil culture works. We'll get into that more in a little bit as well. Um, you have a 30 minute time limit on each of those. So that's three minutes a question, which should be reasonable given the format. Um, if you have IT issues um, or any sort of accommodation you need, we haven't gotten any accommodation requests from across campus because of course this is a summer one course and summer one doesn't start for another week. So Dr. Oswald and I haven't gotten any of those emails, but if you need accommodations, shoot me an email with what you need right after we're done here this morning um, and I'll get that set up for you in the quizzes. So just let me know there. Uh, the Dendro quiz is 20 questions, so you get 60 minutes on it, still three minutes a question. Um, so I, I know this is logistically complex, and so I've set it up in a way, so hopefully there's like six different ways to go figure out the schedule. We're going over it right here. Um, I sent you that schedule handout that you can see there, so you've got that. Um, the, the one I sent you yesterday was pretty much exactly the same as the one that I sent you last week. Uh, the only difference is Dr. Oswald is giving a optional presentation on his Netherlands trip for May 2021 at 530 on Wednesday. So this is the only change right here uh, to the one I sent you last week. I've set this up with all the deadlines on the Zoom meetings, the quizzes, the assignments, the drop boxes, everything in D2L. So you should be able to use D2L's calendar feature and see the 26 different things that have a due date on them right now. And so that should all be in there. And so I've just tried to build in as many possible ways you can look up when things are due as we can given the format. Um, this is all in the syllabus. There's a table in the syllabus that clearly lists everything in the order in which it's due. So you've got that as well. So, so use whichever one works best for you. The information should be the same across all of them. So. <clears throat> okay, so um, here you can see the table of contents for the course. Um, I think I took that as the demo student. So the numbers may be a little different than the numbers you're seeing. Don't worry about that at all. Um, but here's how it's set up. We've got eight modules in here. Um, it looks like most of you have already gotten into this and have started looking at it. Uh, the course intro is brief and it's mostly intended to house the syllabus 
contact information for Dr. Oswald and I, um, and we've got Will Steinley and Wyatt Bagwell on as our teaching assistants again this week. Uh, so they've been helpful so far. You'll see Wyatt in some of the videos. <clears throat> They'll be grading some of your quizzes, and so that's all laid out in the syllabus for you as well. Um, so they've been a big help. So intro, basic stuff like that is there. This doesn't have a lot of meat to it. General silviculture right here, this module houses really just the dendro quizzes, and it houses the um, stand descriptions, and I'll get to those more in a moment. So these are the activities that span over the entire course. The next five modules, pine hardwood, mixed pine hardwood plantation and agroforestry, these are our five daily modules, and this is where almost all the content of the course is found. So pine is Monday, hardwood's Tuesday, mixed pine hardwood is Wednesday, plantation is Thursday, and agroforestry is Friday. And you can kind of already get a sense from some of these numbers. The pine silviculture module that we're doing today, we're starting pretty fast. This has the most assignments and the biggest assignments associated with it. Uh, you've got some assignments due tomorrow. You've got some assignments out of this module due on Wednesday. Um, and then the plantation module is large. It only has one assignment, but you can see there's a lot of content in there as well. So we've kind of spaced it out so it'll hopefully be manageable and the assignments will work well all combined. Um, in terms of office hours, if you look in either D2L or on the syllabus, you've got contact info for Dr. Oswald and I. Um, if you want to hop into a Zoom meeting, uh, hopefully we can just hop into a Zoom meeting, something like that if you need. Um, and so we'll, we'll be trying to answer email and everything um, as we can. We know you guys will be working long hours on it, you know, maybe after 9, 10 p.m. and before, you know, 6, 7 a.m. we won't reply. So um, all the assignments are due into a Dropbox by 7.30 a.m. All those drop boxes are now open. So you can turn in anything early. So our advice here is if you're waiting till, you know, trying to pull an all-nighter on some of this stuff, we wouldn't advise that. And you, you're asking us questions at 5 a.m., you may not get a response until it's a little too late to act on that. So try to plan stuff early as best you can, get stuff in early. That way, if you have a question, we'll be available to you and can answer questions. So here's the breakdown on each individual module. So general silviculture, I've already talked about the dendro quiz. You can find the species list. I already emailed it to you. That species list and a practice quiz for the species list is available on the SFA dendro website that you all have used in dendrology. Um, if you look uh, under the drop down on quizzes there, there's one specifically set up for field station. It should be pretty much the same list you learned in dendro, but I've pulled out Diodar, Cedar, Japanese Zelkova, some of the species you're really not gonna find out in the woods. Um, some of you just rolled out of taking Dendro this past semester when we flipped online, so you know what to expect on those quizzes. Uh, for everyone else, it's just randomly drawn quizzes, so they're not associated with a specific site. If you do need site information, I'll give it to you. So I may say, hey, there's a cactus by this tree, or hey, you're standing in six inches of water in a little text bubble on the quiz. So that would be how you get information on site if you need it. If you don't need it, I haven't included it. I think on almost all these, it's multiple photographs um, of different aspects of morphology so that you can identify that to tree. Um, and then you just type in common name, family, genus, specific epithet, same as you would on a dendro quiz. Um, where the boxes is, where the boxes are on that quiz, it, it's kind of messed up. Uh, D2L wouldn't allow me to edit the display on them, but I've given you a screenshot of an example of what to expect. Um, when you look at the Dendro Quizzes Explained article or in the, the description for that actual Dendro Quiz. And that Dendro Quiz will be at noon on Friday. We'll have a review session for Dendro at 8 a.m. via Zoom on Friday. So that's how that's going to be set up. It honestly worked okay, I think, in Dendro this past semester. Um, the grades on those Dendro Quizzes were actually slightly higher than in a typical semester face-to-face. Uh, so I think it is a, a comparable experience as best we can get online. So, Okay, so you all already have a bunch of questions on the stand descriptions. You can look at that assignment in the general silviculture module. There are three of these due. They're each seven and a half points on your total course grade. Uh, they're all due Saturday at 8 a.m. Stacy had a good question uh, right before we got started, so I realized not everyone was on. But if you can turn the first one in early, I'll do my best throughout the week to grade those as they come in. That way you'll get feedback on the first one you submit 
um, that you can use to do better on the second one and the third one. Um, so that's my goal. We'll see how that goes with 59 students in the class. Uh, we'll play that by ear. So with the stand descriptions, we're gonna be flexible on this, but basically you need to find three forests near you. Now, what we're calling a forest, if there are trees of some sort in it, we're gonna call it a forest. And we're counting species like juniper, post oak, any of the, you know, xeric sided oaks, Texas live oak. So if you're in San Antonio, you know, or that area, open woodlands work. If you're up in Dallas or, you know, Northeast Texas, and you find, you know, some hackberry on a bottom land near a creek, that works. Um, if you're in an area where you have access primarily to urban forests, um, these could be forests in parks, areas like that. Um, so find what you can. Of course, don't violate any state, federal, uh, local laws or ordinances to do this. Stay safe. Um, if, if you're, you know, if you've got a few roommates that are in field station right now, and you all want to go out to the same stand and find the same stand, that's fine. You guys can, multiple of you can do the same stand. Uh, make sure it's an individual effort though. You know, go out to the stand together, wander around together, but each of you collect your own information. Each of you write up your own stand descriptions there. Um, I believe we have Turnitin enabled on that Dropbox and several of the others. Um, so it will be giving us that plagiarism cross check that we can look at there. Um, so we're going to be flexible. Do your best to find an actual forest of some sort, Low. Um, it, it would work better for this assignment if it's not just like two trees in your front yard um, or something like that. If you have any specific issues, questions with that, just let me know. Uh, we'll work through that as best we can. Um, now, I've given you a detailed list of different things you can include in that stand description. These stand descriptions are not required to be memos or technical reports. I haven't given you a specific format. Uh, just make it neat and clear to clearly communicate these. You're writing them for another forester. And so the goal here is you're giving me as a forester information so I can know what this forest looks like and so that we can both together start thinking about, hey, how are we going to write a prescription once we know what the landowner objective is? Um, so composition, structure, all these different things. In these, I want you to include total tree height for the codominance and dominant trees, just one number for the whole stand. So what's an average height for those dominant and codominant trees? And I want you to include basal area. And so I know you guys don't have prisms for the most part, anything like that. So if you look in this general silviculture module, I've put up an old video uh, from Dr. Dean Coble. He was uh, Dr. Wing's predecessor here at SFA. And he shows you how to use a ruler or a yardstick or any object you know the length of that you can hold up and either um, a fiberglass tape, a long tape, or just your pace. You can use your pace for this, and you can get a pretty close estimate on tree height with just those objects. Just by going out this, the same distance uh, as the tree is tall and holding it up, and it ends up working. So he'll, he'll work you through how to do that um, in about a three minute YouTube video. And then for basal area, um, I've put together about a 15 minute video that goes into more detail than you probably want or need but it's about how to make your own angle gauges that do the same thing as a prism. But then I've given you a spreadsheet also, and that spreadsheet will allow you to use any object you find in your home that you can hold up at arm's length as basically a prism, an angle gauge. Um, and it will also ha has a section in it where you can calculate what the basal area factor of your thumb is. So you'll know if you have a BAF 10 thumb or a BFA 9.2 thumb or whatever it is. All you need to do is measure the width of your thumb at a point you know in your arm length. So, um, so we're basically setting you up with timber cruising equipment you can make at home. And I put up some optional documents there too. If some of you are really interested in making your own calipers, all sorts of stuff like that, there's a document up that'll work you through that, but it's probably more involved than most of you wanna get into. So any questions so far on stand descriptions, dendro quizzes? Nothing so far? Okay. Uh, we'll be around if there's more questions. Not and then we've questions. got our five content modules. So there it is written out for you. We've already gone over this. And so here's the details. Um, so we've got a bunch of these uh, 3D video tours for you from Dr. David Schnacki. Uh, he's teaching silviculture. Yeah, John, I see you got a question there. Well, I, I was just looking or at the yeah. course schedule and it says, um, that we would have like a lot of times to go out and do these stand descriptions. 
You've got till Saturday to turn those in. Well, I, I was just saying, like, on that readout of, like, how things are going to flow, there's, like, portions in purple that say stand description. Yeah, you're going to have to find time to do these. And, yeah. uh, again, that, that schedule, that's just one way this could work. It's not the only way. Um, so, that's just yeah. to give you a rough idea of what time is going to look like this week. So, Could be going out at 2 in the morning. Well, you need to go out there in the day because you've got to yeah. be able to see them. But yeah, I, I think there'll be opportunity. And if you can find stands that are reasonably close to where you're living within 20, 30 minutes, you probably only need, you know, maybe 20 minutes in the woods at each stand. Um, so you could knock out the whole field portion of this in probably two or three hours um, is what okay. I'm guessing. So, and then have time later to write them up where you could do that at two in the morning. So, Thank you. Hopefully not. Hopefully everyone's sleeping. But okay. Um, so uh, so Dr. Schnacki's teaching silviculture at NC State. He works for um, a state agency in North Carolina, um, and so he started going out. I guess when his class got flipped online, and he started filming these 3D videos. And so you can click into this in YouTube, and you can use your mouse, and you can actually scroll around, and you can look at the stand, and you can see all the different stuff in it. So we've incorporated a bunch of those. Uh, those are pretty helpful. He's got a chihuahua and a cruiser vest here too in a lot of the videos. So you can watch the, the chihuahua pretend to be a squirrel run up and down trees. Um, so we've got that. We've got videos that uh, Dr. Oswald and I have put together. And so this pine silviculture module, again, we're starting with the one that has the most assignments. So you're going to work up an individual memo uh, with prescriptions for two different stands we'll work you through. And Dr. Oswald has some data up for that and shows you how the data was collected. So you're gonna to put together that memo that's due tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. Um, and that memo is an individual exercise and it uses the memo format. Uh, Dr. Oswald will be grading that. Um, there's a pole mill exercise uh, where you take a few virtual tours of pole mills. And honestly, some of these exercises are better than what you would get in a face-to-face -face field station. Uh, I've got a five minute video up where you're gonna learn more about a pole mill than you would spending an hour and a half walking through one because you can hear everything. Um, usually when we go to the pole mill by Jasper at field station, not only is it really loud, but this must be the most soft spoken guy leading the tour you've ever met. And so everyone just kind of walks out at the end, like what happened? I don't know what happened. I couldn't hear a thing. So honestly, some of this stuff is going to work a little bit better than this format. We may be incorporating it in this format in future years. We'll see. But there I, I got lucky. I found another video tour of a pole mill that didn't have any audio over it. Just terrible eighties soundtrack. And so I've set that up as a quiz, but it's not actually a quiz. I'm just using the quiz feature in D2L. Uh, you get to see what's happening in that video and caption over it. Um, and so with that, you'll be able to work your way back and forth between all the different videos and through that exercise, learn what everything is process-wise that goes on in creating a utility pole. So that's also due uh, tomorrow morning. So those are the two things due tomorrow morning. I'm anticipating the pole mill exercise taking an hour at most. That RCW memo, depending on how good you are at memos, between an hour and two hours, most likely, uh, to put that together for most people. Um, you're going to be in a group of four uh, for the fuel loading technical report. And again, Dr. Oswald has set up that. That's what you downloaded the Behave Plus software for. If you haven't downloaded that yet, I have a two-minute video up showing you where to download it. Uh, Dr. Oswald already sent you the link. And so with this, we're using the group functions in D2L. Hopefully you've used those before. Um, if not, you can go to, um, let me pull it up real quick so I can see. In D2L, you can go to communication tools and click groups. I've already got the groups randomly assigned. And I set up all these groups with a locker uh, as well. Uh, many of you probably already have each other's contact information. But if you go to um, communication tools groups, You'll see what group you're in for each exercise. So I've labeled this one fuel load. And so you'll see if you're in group fuel load two, fuel load four, whatever it is, and click your locker. And even right beside your locker, there may be a function where you can email everyone in your group. So that's how you find out who, who's in your group. That's how you get in contact with them. And then once you get in contact with your groups, you're gonna be doing some small group work. So you all can set up Zoom sessions. If anyone wants to know how to do that and doesn't know, let me know, we can work you through that. Um, you guys can communicate any way you're comfortable communicating with your group. Any technology will work fine. So, so that'll be a group of four you're working in there. 
So, and you can see that's not due till Wednesday morning. So don't panic if you don't get a lot done on this today, you will have more time to work on that tomorrow. And so here's the different virtual tour, tours and activities we're doing in this Pine module, uh, this 3D virtual tour of longleaf management in North Carolina, how to measure habitat in the Boykin Spring stands with Dr. Oswald. Um, in the Sandy Creek stand, you'll see I work Wyatt and another student, Hannah, uh, through utility pole classification. What we're hoping, we're hoping to knock all of this week out this week. Okay, so we're done with field silviculture. But if we're allowed to come back on campus in the fall, our hope is to offer a couple days of opportunity where you all can get out in the field. And one of the things we'd like to do out in the field is let you actually try out pole classification. Uh, we've got the utility pole mill virtual tours. You've got a couple different exercises with Dr. Oswald on fuel loading that'll set you up for this technical report. Um, Dr. Oswald and Sarah Fuller were able to go out to Fairchild State Forest on Thursday last week and got one of our alumni, Jason Ellis, with Texas Forest Service to tour you around out there. Um, and then Dr. Oswald and I put together a couple different stops where we talk about Sonderager pine, the named hybrid between lava holly and longleaf pine. There's also a cool little three-page Forest Service article with this, real simple, quick read. But basically, they had a pine they thought was a new named hybrid, and they figured out a technique where they could measure different things on the trees and figure out the, the, the hybrid that they thought was new was probably just a sonderator. So kind of a neat little exercise where you can really see how they were able to do that. Hardwood silviculture on Tuesday, uh, you'll be working in pairs to produce an old growth schematic. So Tuesday, tomorrow is the only day when you're in two different groups in the same time. You'll be in your fuel loading group with uh, two or three other students and you'll be in a different old growth group with one other student. So that'll take a little management tomorrow Every other day of the course, you're only in one group at a time. Um, but Wednesday morning at 7.30 a.m., you have the fuel loading group technical report due and the old growth schematic due. Um, and I think this old growth schematic, I don't think that's gonna be too much work for y'all. Um, but we do another virtual tour of Upland Oak Management uh, with uh, Dr. Schnacki again. Uh, he'll show you how to use a mist blower, which is basically a way to apply herbicide with a leaf blower, it's kind of neat. Yeah, Stacy, you have a question. So is it one technical report per group or is it per person? Okay, so for all the group activities, you're turning in one assignment per group. So anytime you're in a group, you turn in one assignment per group. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and that should be specified within those assignment directions on D2L. Um, and I believe in many times it's specified in the description of the Dropbox as well. Um, we've got a bottomland hardwood silviculture presentation with Dr. Randy Rousseau. He's done a ton of hardwood research. He's at Mississippi State, so a good presentation there. Um, I do a demo of Baker Broadfoot out in the woods behind my house for you to show you how that works. And this is another activity where we would like to do it in the fall where you can actually try it um, if we're able to do that. And then uh, in a normal field station, we walk out onto a peninsula out on the Toledo Bend Reservoir. I went out there and filmed everything for you. So I've got a virtual tour for you where I talk about um, old growth structure that you're going to use to build that schematic. So you can see that pine module is pretty significant today, but then we ease off a little tomorrow. So you have time to work on the, the fuel loading report, maybe do a little bit on your stand descriptions. Wednesday, we get into mixed pine hardwood silviculture. And so the major assignment there, you're going to be in a group of three or four people. Um, you're going to read an article on the opportunities of managing mixed pine hardwood stands in the U.S. South. Uh, it's a stand type that's kind of been ignored, but has some potential there. And what you're going to do, uh, you're going to pretend you've been hired on by TFS, and you're going to create an outreach advertisement to landowners to show them the opportunities with mixed stand management. So you're going to work in a group of three or four, and within each group, you're going to produce one video ad. So that'll be 15 ads total for the whole class that you'll submit Thursday morning at 7.30 a.m., and it needs to be between one minute and five minute in length. So hopefully that's gonna make it manageable. Um, you can use any software you want to do this. So um, hopefully someone in your group will be good with that software. Um, and one thing I didn't mention, so this mixed stand ad video, you all will be submitting 15 of them combined. This old growth schematic, I've got you in pairs. So you'll be submitting 30 of these combined. My intent once they're all submitted is gonna to be to stitch them all together into one document or one longer video upload that to the course website to allow you to watch all of them and then set up a poll in a Zoom session after that so you guys can vote uh, and whichever one you think is best, I'll get an extra bonus point. So 
you guys will be kind of competing with yourselves uh, with each other on that to see if you can get an extra bonus point by making uh, the best one in the class. So um, you'll go on a woodland restoration tour where they've got mixed pine hardwood. They're trying to restore to more of an open woodland again with Dr. Schnacki. So we've got a lot of these great 3D video tours. Um, you've got three different guest speakers we brought in that'll go over turkey habitat with you in two of them in Texas, one in Mississippi. So how you can use silviculture to manage for turkey habitat, what it looks like. So Jamie Hooker with the National Wild Turkey Federation, we filmed a new video for this um, out near Milam. So that'll be included. Um, I go over a cove forest type in about a 10 minute video. That's not a long one, um, but it's a unique stand type that's pretty rare in Texas, more common elsewhere in the country. And then you get into that article. So again, you can see it gets more manageable. And this might be a day when you end up with enough time to go uh, work on some of those stand descriptions, study some dendro. Thursday, we get into plantation silviculture. And so this is a pretty substantial module in terms of content. Um, you have a presentation on tree improvement by Trevor Walker. Uh, Trevor Walker got two degrees from SFA, his bachelor's and master's. He's currently a PhD student at NC State, and he's working for the biggest tree improvement co-op in the southern U.S., probably in the country there at NC State. So he goes over that process for us. So with plantations, we're focused on loblolly for a lot of this because that's our major species in plantations. So it starts out with this. Here's how you get the trees. Then it moves on to how you get them established. So FRC is the Forest Resource Consultants. Uh, they took over for Campbell Global on about half a million acres in Central East Texas. So this section is, now that you've got the seedlings, how do you get them established? How do you get them planted so you get your plantation started? Um, that'll be with William Moncrief of FRC, and he uh, graduated from SFA in 1999. So almost all the guest speakers we've got for you are, S are SFA alumni. We're bringing in about 10 guest speakers here through these different videos. And then we put a whole rotation together, but we kind of put a spin on it. So we're showing you how an entire rotation is managed, but we're doing it on reclaimed mine lands up near Henderson, Texas, just uh, northwest of NAC here. And so you'll see how they dig lignite coal out 100 feet deep, put all that soil back, then they get a forest growing on top of it. So that's split up into three parts. You get a presentation and then a tour by Jeff Lamb. And Jeff, again, is an SFA alum. You see him here. Um, and then afterwards, the real question is, if they're doing all this coal mining, strip mining, and putting trees back on it, you know, are the trees growing well? So we've got a lot of research we've done here at SFA on that. So I put in a, a 30 or 26 minute research presentation so we can see is what they're doing actually working. So that wraps up that. So this kind of works you through an entire rotation, uh, including thinning in the middle of the rotation, but with a spin on it in that it's mine land reclamation. Uh, finally, we move into hardwood plantations. I put what I could find on these in there for you, but it's not too much. Uh, so I've got a reading for you on the state of the art from 2000. So honestly, not a whole lot has changed. That's still kind of the state of the art on hardwood plantations. And then you've got just a couple quick YouTube videos. One I made out on the Luminant Mine Lands, one with Dr. Schnocky uh, that look at different considerations for hardwood plantations. So. And then Friday, uh, the idea is we do the Zoom meeting in the morning where we go over Dendro, and then uh, you get an introduction to Mill Tour Week. And then um, from there, you have that Dendro quiz at noon that lasts an hour until about one. Um, and so hopefully you have a lot of time to study for Dendro in the morning on Friday. Um, this agroforestry module we put on Friday, it's the, the shortest of our modules in, start, in terms of content. Um, it's one textbook chapter from the practice of silviculture. There's maybe eight of you in here that have already taken Forestry 347 silviculture. So this is the same textbook. You may already have this textbook, but I put up a PDF for you if you don't. Uh, so it's chapter 31. It's only about 12 pages long. Shouldn't take too much time to read. But this gives you a broad introduction into agroforestry. Uh, then Dr. Oswald uh, gives you a good lecture on agroforestry from his range management class where it starts broad on agroforestry, but then really focuses you in on silvopasture as one application of agroforestry. Um, then you can see him here, he tours you a stand near Carthage where he's established a research and demo site. We'll normally go to that during field station. Um, so sorry, you won't get the real cow patty smell. Um, depending on where you live, I don't know, Will Alders, you may be able to find some cow patties at hand. Um, but you know, other than that, you, you get a pretty good view of what the silvopasture site is. Um, and then we've got a tour of a similar site that uh, Dr. Schnocky uh, is showing us in North Carolina. The main difference there is they've also got some cherry bark planted 
Um, so a few little differences there. So you get to see a couple different civil pasture sites. Okay, so those are the content modules. There's a conclusion module. It's just a master checklist for the whole course. If you're worried that you haven't done something, there's a master checklist for you. There's checklists on each of those modules. Um, and so, you know, we're not requiring you to complete those checklists. They're there for you as a tool if you're worried that you're missing stuff. So, and then again, we hope to get you out in the field for a couple days in the fall if we can. Um, we're also, none of us know what's gonna happen in the fall. Uh, the university is going to release guidance on that, hopefully by late June. But we know some of these weeks of field station like wildlife and GIS really need some field days. So our hope in the fall is we prioritize those weeks if we start face to face in the fall. But then if a second wave hits of COVID or something like that and they flip us online, we've set up field civil culture where you've gotten a pretty good experience just this summer. So we'll know more when we know more, but we, we don't have any firm information for you right now, obviously. That's the way things go nowadays, so. Okay, so any questions on the logistics? All that was just logistics of the course. No questions. Hey, Jeremy? Yeah. Uh, if I could just uh, mention that uh, for those of you who are looking at all this stuff saying, uh, man, this is way too much for one week, Basically, consider that we swapped out you sleeping in vans for actually information. Uh, because we figured out that a lot of these sites we went to, they would, we would drive for two hours, we'd be visiting the site for an hour, then we'd drive two more hours. Well, you got stuff to look at now. So it's about the same amount of time every day than we would if it was the real experience without the chiggers. Yeah, I didn't have time to put it together, but I was hoping to get some photographs of the inside of the vans so you guys could all set that up as a Zoom background. And then we would put you in groups of eight and you would just have to sit in the group with your band backgrounds on for an hour. But we didn't have time to put all that together, so. Without the smell of fifth week field station smell in the van either. Yeah, would have had to open a can of tuna and leave it outside for a few days or something. Yeah. Okay, so no questions on course logistics. Okay, well, why don't we take about a five minute break now before we move on to the next portion so I don't zoom everybody out. Um, we'll probably be going to about 10 a.m. on this introductory material. Um, so let's take a five minute break and be back at so 8.40 uh, before we move on to our, our next little section this morning. Professor Sobel, you have time after this meeting ends? Yeah, yeah, I've got time all day. So the, the way this is set up, I've, I've, Dr. Oswald and I have been working hard for weeks and weeks and weeks uh, building this. And so now, hopefully, while you guys are doing it, we have time to help you troubleshoot. So, yeah, we'll definitely be available. Unless yeah, I see Carson. your emails, Will. I'll see if I can get back to you. That was Carson. We're not helping him. He's on his own. All right, I got it now. Okay, I was just Maybe. replying. I, my guess in your case, Will, is that it was decoupled from the term. It's not technically in summer one, maybe, in uh, D2L. So if you click all on the far left there, that might allow you to see it. But you yeah. found it? Yeah, I, I got it. It must okay. have opened up or something. I don't know Good why it was go. gray this morning. Yeah, it, it didn't open until 7 a.m. this morning. So. Hey, uh, Dr. Stovall. Yeah. I was just wondering, so you said on Friday that we're going to be, we're going to be wrapping up and stuff. Um, you said Dr. Colehavy and Dr. McBroom are going to be introducing us to another, is it, or do we have another week after this or? My, my current understanding is they'll be introducing you to their week, but their week is entirely asynchronous until the fall activities. Okay. So okay. I don't think they have planned activities for you next week. Um, but if you want clarity on that, please just email Dr. McBroom. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. 